Hey guys, Ellie in Space here. I'm here at Isla Blanca Park. A lot of people come here to fish, but sometimes they come here to check out Starship activity. Of course, a lot of people have filled this park watching Starhopper and Starship prototype tests. And this will be a great place to watch the launch from. Why? Because as you can see, we are only five miles from the launch pad. So very close, we'll be able to see, hopefully if all goes to plan and there are no ruts, we'll be able to see the launch arc to the east. It's gonna go by the Gulf Coast and then try to thread the needle between Florida and Cuba. So this is going to be a great spot. However, a few things that you should know before you try to come here. You're gonna wanna get here early if you're trying to park in the park because it's gonna fill up really fast. There are ways to park off site and if you choose to walk in on foot you can walk in for free if you want to park here it's twelve dollars cash only per vehicle so make sure you have your cash so you don't have to get turned around and lose your spot another thing i'm holding this big floppy hat you're going to want to bring your sunscreen <laughs> your hat your bug repellent uh, the sun and the bugs are pretty brutal out here in texas even in april so make sure that you come prepared obviously water as well but this is one of the great spots there are a few spots also um, in port isabel that you could watch the launch from however they're more restricted so this is like the big popular spot there are also ways from our airbnb where we're staying at south padre island we could watch the launch from there but this is about the closest you're gonna get uh, and see the launch safely so i'm at the entrance of isla blanca park you can see these cars are all trying to get in it is a 12 dollar daily use fee and that is per vehicle and that is for the hours of six in the morning until 11 at night you guys asked so here it is cash only no credit cards this is for the isla blanca park daily use fee twelve dollars military veterans daily fee five dollars um and you can walk in on foot for free but could be a long walk for you or it could be hard to find parking so this is the information for you here if you do walk in you have to walk pretty far to get to the actual kind of viewing area Hey guys, so this is my fourth trip here to Starbase and it is just surreal to be back here, see all of the changes already just since about a year ago when I was here last time. I can remember my first time here seeing the chopsticks actually being welded. And so now to see where we are and awaiting the big test, the big orbital test flight is pretty exciting. So I plan to be bringing you videos and live streams every single day while we await the launch. Of course, before the launch, we should see the wet dress rehearsal. And I'm really excited because check out over here, you can see our hotel there off in the distance. So you can see how close we are. Even if I wanted to stay at the hotel, I still have a great view for live streaming the launch and everything going on here. So really appreciative for the support. I told you guys I would come down here on crutches and make this work and um, definitely excited to see this finally come to fruition because I know we've all been waiting for a long time. So looking forward to bringing you coverage every day. Okay, so Joe, you, I didn't know much about this historical marker, so tell us more about it. Well, if you come out here to view uh, the orbital launch facility here at Starbase, you'll note there's a historical marker, and a lot of people think that that's because of the operations with Starbase, but it has nothing to do with that. It actually goes back to the mid-1850s, when in this area, people came out and they established a railroad. They used a floating bridge, and it went through this uh, section of the area we now call Boca Chica, and it connected some of the major communities in this area. And it's just amazing to think back that long ago, people out here in the middle of this building a railroad. <laughs> yeah, and so you were saying maybe someday they'll have a historical marker for Starbase as well. Well, I would think so. I mean, can you imagine, you know, 
10, 15, 30 years from now, they'll come out here and put the historical marker because of the development of Starship. And hopefully by that time, all of the great things that it has achieved for, for mankind. I knew about it uh, when I was here last time because I was looking around at a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And at that time, they didn't have this fence so you could get a little bit closer. Yeah, I hadn't seen the fence either. So yeah. this must have been here and I just didn't notice it. Wow, and so for both of us here, this is our first time seeing it fully stocked. What do you think about it? I think it's uh, amazing. Uh, I think it's really hard to get a sense of the scale unless you're here in person. Uh, the stacked Starship by itself is close to 400 feet tall and it's up on top of the or orbital launch mount, which is another, say, 60 feet or so. So we're talking 450 feet tall, that's about 100 and 30 meters tall, just the Starship on top of the orbital launch facility. And also the tower is even taller than that. Well, and hopefully we'll be able to cover the wet dress rehearsal, which should be sometime in the coming days. So. I certainly hope so. Hopefully with the next day or two, and that'll be probably the last major hurdle that we can see technically here at Starbase. And I'm hoping that it goes really well. Another face that you might recognize in this video is, yeah, Joe Tegmeyer. A lot of people have actually been recognizing him down at Starbase as well. And I just wanna shout him out in this video because as you know, I am still on crutches and going down to Starbase is definitely difficult on crutches. So having help from Joe has been awesome. He has a channel where he mainly captures the development of Giga Texas by drone, but of course he's using his drone down here in South Texas. So I will link his channel in the description. But I just wanted to say thank you to Joe because this trip would be very, very difficult without his help. Real question will be, how will it look when it actually catches it? Uh, I think that'll definitely be for another day. But it's uh, the thing actually I'm interested on that is obviously they swivel back, you know, they can go to the right and the left but they only swivel about 45 degrees, which still puts a landing ship very close to not only the orbital launch tower itself and the, the platform, but look, look how close they are to this, uh, the tanks. Yeah. And I, earlier I did a video where I was just showing them. I said, take a look at just how close it is. I, I, think, I think that they've got a handle on it. They know what they're doing, but that is really, <laughs> really close. And. You know, you would uh, presume that when they launch, the tanks may be empty because they put it all in the Starship, but that's as much as another Starship worth of propellant. <laughs> right. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you got some good information out of it and maybe have a better idea of everything you need to be prepared for when you come down here to South Texas. Of course, the hardest thing to predict, even if you come prepared, is when exactly Starship will launch, but I will try to keep you updated with as much information as I have. So far in just my few days of being here, I've met people from around the world. A lot of them are not able to stick around which is a big bummer, but it's exciting nonetheless to be here. And even to see Starship fully stacked, it's something that people will never forget. So if you plan to come into the area, let me know. And if you liked this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe to Ellie and Space so you don't miss any future updates. Like, this looks so dumb. It's like a Dumbo hat. Do you need me in the shot? No? People are gonna be like,